Hello, welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the Cambridge O-Level English Language Syllabus for the year 2021. So it's the most recent syllabus. A very important thing to make note of regarding the syllabus is that in comparison to the previous version, which is the September 2018 version of the syllabus, not much has changed. So as you can see here in this line right here, it says that there are no significant changes which affect the teaching method or if you're a private student, the way that you would go about to study. Um, for the O-level exams, okay? So there's not much differences. Well, not really obvious ones that would affect students directly, right? But with that being said, let's just briefly go through. So skim through this syllabus. So you have the in introduction, of course, uh, the teacher support, which is not really relevant to you unless you're a teacher. Syllabus content at a glance. Assessment at a glance. So let's just quickly start here. Syllabus content at a glance. So we have Cambridge O-Level English Language offers candidates the opportunity to respond confidently to a range of reading material, including fiction, nonfiction. Okay, so you, by, by going through the content, you would learn how to read both fiction and nonfiction text. Okay, and you also have the opportunity to enhance your writing skills by writing a, gr a great range of text types for different audiences. All right, so essentially, you by going through this program, you enhance your reading skills and your writing skills. Okay, moving on. All right, so here we have the assessments at a glance. Candidates for Cambridge O-Level English Language must take two compulsory components, paper one and paper two, all right, which is the same thing as previous years, for recent previous years. Both papers are externally marked, all right, that's nothing new, and the grades are from A star to E. So you have paper one that is all about writing, okay, and just like the previous syllabus, you have section one, which is directed writing. So you're given tasks and you have to meet all of the criteria in that, in that task. And then section two, you have composition. So that's when you are presented with, here it says five description, argumentative, narrative, essay style. Oops, sorry, essay titles, and you have to choose one of those five different essays to write, okay? And you have the word limits, so for section two, it's 350 to 500 words, and for section one, you have 200 to 300 words, okay? And here, also notice that both sections are equally weighted so you have 30 marks to grab for both sections okay so that is paper one is writing one hour and 30 minutes okay so nothing changed here total of 60 marks and then paper two which i'm sure a lot of you are familiar with reading so you have two passages and you have to answer questions regarding those passages. All right, and for the reading, the reading exam, so paper two, you have one hour and 45 minutes. So 15 minutes more than the first one. And if you notice, paper one and paper two are equally weighted. Uh, sorry, I forgot to mention here, section one and section two of paper two are equally weighted as well and you have paper one paper two that are equally weighted so 50 50 all right so this means that uh, try your best to do well 
in both paper one and paper two because they're worth the same. Okay, and here you have details about the availability. You can either take your test during the summer session or the winter session. Right? So here you have details about the aims, right, of the assessments, so the objectives. And overall, it's communi communicative competence, so the ability to communicate with clarity, relevance, accuracy, and variety. Creativity, of course, so the writing components. When you have to write essays, you have to be creative in also a short amount of time. So I believe it's an hour, yeah, an hour and 30 minutes. So you, they really want to see your level of creativity, critical skills, cross-cultural awareness, Okay, and for cross-cultural awareness, it, what they're talking about here is they're not going to test you on specific knowledge about a bunch of different countries and cultures. They're just going to sometimes give you a text that uh, is, is talking about a different country or, for example, I'm thinking of those descriptive descriptive text about traveling to a country that maybe you're not familiar with okay so it's how you deal with information that's slightly unfamiliar to you okay it could be familiar or unfamiliar so that's what they mean by cross-cultural awareness all right and here they go more into detail about the objectives for reading and writing, okay? So reading, you have explicit meaning, so things that are very obvious when you're reading the text. And then over here, you have in, implicit meanings and attitudes, so implicit meaning that it's, it's not as obvious. You kind of have to pause and think for a second. So read in between the lines, in a sense. All right, you also have analyze, evaluate, and develop facts, ideas, and opinions. Okay, so when you read something, you have to analyze, and you also have to identify facts, and you can also form your own opinions and identify the opinion of the author. Okay, demonstrate understanding of how writers achieve effects. So the meaning behind a sentence and the effect that the words can have on someone. Select for specific purposes. This one I'm not too sure, but it's one of the objectives. Um, then we move on to the writing objectives. Articulate experience and ex experience and express what is thought, felt, and imagined. So you have to articulate yourself clearly. Things have to flow and things have to make sense, the structure, right? And second one is sequence facts, ideas, and opinions. So again, we have, uh, it all plays into expressing yourself clearly. Uh, this, the facts need to follow one another and your ideas need to be clear. And so and so do your opinions. <laughs> your opinions need to be clear as well. Okay. Use a range of appropriate vocabulary. So your vocabulary must be well advanced. Okay? They want to make sure that you can use sophisticated words where they need to be, and that when you use them, that they make sense in their context. Use register appropriate to audience and context. So depending on the writing task, you have to use appropriate language, right? The way that you talk to your friend is, the way, is a different way that you talk to your parents 
and the way that you talk to your parents is not the same as you would talk to uh, someone of really high authority from the government or like a police officer, okay? Next is make accurate use of spelling, punctuation, and grammar. So you definitely want to limit grammar mistakes, okay? So that's important when you're writing. And last thing here, I believe, is the relationship between assessment objectives and components. All right, so paper one is all about writing, so it makes sense that paper one here, remember that AO1 is in reference to reading. Okay, so paper one is about writing so the reading component only has a 5% weight for paper one, okay? And 45% is about all of this here, okay? So all of these components account for 45% of your paper one, okay? And for paper two, it's the opposite. You have 45% is in relation to how, how well you can read. So you're on, so all of these points here. And 5% is about all of the writing points, right? Because paper, paper two is much, it's a reading, it's reading. There's two pa big passages you have to read and understand, okay? So, if you have to take away anything from this part over here is that in paper one, make sure that you don't make much grammar mistakes. Your writing needs to be on point, okay? And for paper two, you can make a few grammar mistakes, it's okay. They're not focused on how you write, but they're focused on the quality of your answers, okay? So what your answers will be like and what you give them that matters a lot for paper two, okay? And here I think that this section just goes a little bit more into detail about everything that I've said in this video. So if you wanna take the time to read this by yourself, it just goes a little more into detail about paper, uh, paper one and two in the sections, okay? So hopefully this video was useful to you. I really hope that it was. If you do have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below and I will definitely get back to you as soon as possible, okay? And with that being said, we have reached the end. And I do hope, of course, that you have a beautiful day or night, depending on where you are located in the world. And I will chat with you in the next video.